Thank you, worship team. Thank you to the team at the back there. And I would just like to ask my brother just to come with a um, message that just this morning that he brought that is so powerfully connected to this. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just uh, feel that I want to flow with what the Holy Spirit is doing this morning. And so just to add on to what Pastor Deline has already said, um, I want to take you to a story in the Old Testament coming from 2 Samuel, talking about David's mighty men. And something that I just feel at this time that we are in, where we're not just being tested individually, but we are certainly being tested corporately as well. Because my brother and sister, the body of Christ functions through the power of the Holy Spirit and critically, critically with that comes the unity of the brethren. And so when Satan comes to kill and destroy, he also comes to divide. And so my brother and sister, this morning, we have to fashion our, 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 ourselves in the likeness of what Christ says about us. We have to determine in our hearts what it is that we believe in this time that we're in. Because if we do not understand what Christ is in us, and if we do not understand what Christ has called us to, and if we do not fashion ourselves according to that, we will be destroyed. And bit by bit, one by one, Satan will come to disrupt and take away the unity, and he does it by individually attacking you. So this morning, the word I want to bring and the encouragement I want to bring to you comes from uh, from David's mighty men. And specifically, I want to speak about two of them. The first one is Eleazar, who himself decided to stand when the rest of Israel fled. And my brother and sister, this morning, when we look at his story, he took up the sword, which is the word of God. He took up the sword and he attacked the Philistines that were encamped um, around the armies of Israel. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, he slaughtered them single-handedly. But my brother and sister, they, there was something that, that Eleazar took up that day. The first thing is, there was no fear. The second thing is, he took up the sword which is symbolic of the word of God. It say, it's, they said when he had finished, when he had finished, his hand was so tired, he could not lift that sword, but neither could they free his hand from the hilt, from the handle of the sword. The word of God says it was cleaved into the sword. It means that as they took his fingers away from that, from that sword, as they took his, are you hearing me? As they, as they tried to free his hand from that sword, finger by finger, it tore away, it bled. It was so cleaved to that handle. My brother and sister, how cleaved is your heart to the word of God? How cleaved is are you in your heart to the word of God? Because this is the encouragement I want to bring you this morning. The same, the same story is, tell, is told of Sham, Sham, Shammah. He stood alone in a field of lentils. While the whole of Israel fled, the Philistines attacked him. And he stood in that field. And the power of the Holy Spirit came upon him. And he slaughtered 800, 1,000. The word of God is not absolutely clear on that. But 
it says that a troop of Philistines attacked him. A whole troop. And he stood his ground. My brother and sister, in this hour, in this hour, it is you that God is talking to. It is you. It is you, my brother and sister, because you, you are the body of Christ. You are the living stones. You are the house, the body of Christ, the church that the gates of hell will not stand against. That is your calling. That is your destiny. That is your identity in Christ. And so 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given you, my sister, a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And so my brother and sister, we see something significant that we have and hold. There is something significant and deeply rooted in you. Something so powerful. But the one thing that can paralyze it, the one thing that can steal everything away from you is fear. And God says in his word, my brother, my sister, my beloved, I, the Lord your God, has not given you a spirit of fear. But I have given you something to conquer fear. I have given you something to paralyze fear. I have given you love. And my brother and sister, this is our weapon. That is your weapon, my sister, love. Is there fear in your life? Then I would ask you this this morning. Have you stopped loving? Have you stopped caring? Where is your heart? Or, or is the word of God something that your heart is cleaved to? My brother and sister, how dear do you hold the word of God? How is your heart cleaved to the word of God? That is, that is I believe, what God is challenging each and every one of us because each and every one of us make up the body of Christ. And my brother and sister, it is the unity that we have in the spirit the, that makes the ecclesia. It is the unity that we hold in the spirit that brings the ecclesia, the anointing, the power of God. There is no power without sacrifice. There is no power without sacrifice. Christ is the example of that. For he endured all things on his way to the cross. Betrayal. Falsely accused by those he loved. By those he served. Falsely accused. Betrayed. Called a liar. Neglected forsaken, left alone. Instead, they chose a murderer. The people that he served, the people that he loved, the people that he healed, on the way to the cross, he suffered and endured all things. Punishment beyond anything we could ever imagine at the hands of the Romans. They were known, they were notorious for their methods of torture. To endure the cross is the worst torture anyone can endure. It starts by suffocation. It leads to dehydration. It is the worst suffering that can possibly, anyone could possibly go through. The Romans knew that. They were masters at torture. Not only did Christ suffer the heartache of betrayal. Not only did he suffer the punishment by the lashing and the whip of the Roman cat of nine tails. But he endured the cross. My brother and sister, this morning, God is calling us to pick up your cross, my sister. Pick up your cross and endure all things. Whatever, whatever it is, you have to endure. Whatever it is 
that you are facing, whatever challenge it may be, whether it is sickness, whether it is financial, whether you are depressed, whether you have no outcome, whether you are lonely, whether you are old, whether you are fearful or not, God is saying to you this morning, pick up your cross. Church, pick up your cross. Because when we pick up our cross, we come to the door that opens God's power. God's power is released at that place, at that place where we sacrifice. God is calling us to a sacrifice beyond what we can imagine. He's calling the church to sacrifice itself. My brother and sister, how about starting to sacrifice yourselves for each other? So that the love that Ephesians talks about where he says, eventually when we are all knitted together, sinew to sinew, bone to bone, flesh to flesh, muscle to muscle, we start building up ourselves in our most holy faith and in love. My brother and sister, in this time we are in, God is calling for his church to stand up in love. So that we can overcome fear. He's calling each one of you to pick up your cross. To bear it as Christ bore his cross. Because does the word of God not say that anyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ will suffer as Christ suffered? Does the word of God not say that? My brother and sister, are, you, are we willing to pick up that cross? Are we willing to bear it so that the life and love and power of God may be released? My brother and sister, picking up your cross, bearing it, not for yourself, but for those around you, as Christ did. Not for himself, not for his own glory, but for the glory of the Father. For the church that he knew would be sitting here today. He bore it all for us. So. When there is fear. You have a weapon. A weapon so powerful. You have love. There is no other way of conquering fear in your life. There is no other way of overcoming fear in your life. Except through love. You cannot overcome fear by becoming violent you cannot overcome fear by by any other method than allowing love to come forth from your heart for God has not given you a spirit of fear but of love and when love when you make the sacrifice of love power comes forth as it did with Christ because was it not at that moment that he gave himself on the cross. That redemption was released. Was it not at that very point of sacrifice that the power of God shook the earth? Was it not at that very point of sacrifice that the door was opened and he, is, he descended into the very pit of hell and he made war? And such was the power and the magnitude of that love that it shook the very foundations of hell. And everything in hell trembled because of the sacrifice that Christ has made. It is his sacrifice that released the power. And my brother and sister, that's why Rome, uh, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says that God has not given us a spirit of love but of power. When you release love, when you choose to love, when you choose to forgive, when you choose not to gossip, when you choose not to envy, when you choose, when you choose to speak forth the righteousness of God, when you choose to live and fashion your life according to the word of God, when you make that sacrifice, there is power. There is no power. In hate. 
There is no power in revenge. And so when there's power, we see something else coming into being. And that is a sound mind. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. The Amplified Bible says, well-balanced, self-control, not, not timid, not cowering away, not fearful, not pretentious, not acting as though you need help, but a mind that is strong and firm. And that means, my brother and sister, you as a person are in a place to make the right decisions over your life. You are in a place of a, having a sound mind. It is not driven by fear. It is not polluted, corrupted, tainted by fear. But it is powerful. And you can make the right decisions. You are in the place of making the right decisions for your life, for your family, for your children, for yourself. And it means then... You are not open to the works of Satan, to the voice of Satan. You are no longer a target for him. You now have a sword in your hand. You are now Shammah, Alazar. And if you have to stand alone, my sister, my brother, we stand alone. For God is our strength. He is our right hand. And if you cleave your heart to the word of God, as the hand of Eleazar was on the hilt of his sword, if you cleave your heart to that sword, to the word of God, and you have love in your heart, Then, my brother and sister, you are in that place where the power of God can begin to flow through you, as it did through Elazar, as it did through Shammah, as it did to many, many thousands of saints since that time. But, my brother and sister, there's a sacrifice. If you want to live a godly life in Christ, you will suffer as he suffered. Unless a man Picks up his cross, the word of God says. Unless a man picks up his cross and follows me, he cannot be my disciple. So this is the encouragement I bring to you. This is, this is what I believe in my heart as Pastor Deline, as Pastor Chris has, has said so many times is that in this time, we are called to reassess ourselves, reassess your heart, judge yourself that you not be judged, stand firm, and do not allow the enemy to deceive you by fear. But stand up knowing who you are in Christ. Knowing what you have in you. Not a spirit of fear. But of love and power and a sound mind. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I just thank you to my brother for sharing <clears throat> that word because... I just knew this morning when he shared that God said to me, there's going to be a word coming forth that is so powerful. It's going to be like a spearhead in the time that we are living in. And I know that we need that. Do we need that? I think we all need that to know who we are in Christ. I'm grateful to God for that. I just um, want to pray, Father God, that we take this word and that we make it our own, that we allow it to take root, to shape us, to form us, to form our decisions. And Lord God, that we will 
not go out of here allowing the word in any way to have not to fall on the fertile soil of our hearts. We pray that the word falls on the very, very heart of the heart of the heart of our hearts, that fertile soil, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.